Fine? Yeah. Yeah. You're good? Okay. All right, so I actually have two poems for you guys. Uh, one's a little bit more serious than the other, so I'll start off with the more lighthearted one. Uh, but basically, here is five reasons to date a poet. <laughs> Reason number one. Have you ever asked your significant other how they think you look and they just answer back, good? Babe, I will tell you how perfectly your hair sits on your shoulders, crafted by hands dipped in gold. Every time you turn, it flies in a way that steals the wind from my lungs. <laughs> or how your eyes envelop and gross a drug with no chance of OD, but I'm addicted. My only way of coping with it is to write poetry about them. It's the claws at my shirt to bring me closer. Or how there's nothing more perfect than your raw, untampered exterior. But yeah, I did notice that you gave your eyebrows just a little extra attention, and it makes you look fine as hell, because only a poet recognizes the ant-sized beauties in a well-painted masterpiece. No one's going to be longing for the romance in romance movies when we're the ones writing the scripts for them. Number two, you think you like cute texts? Try a handwritten letter. Try boxes of handwritten letters. Try so many handwritten letters and notes that you forget my handwriting isn't the default font of Microsoft Office. And oh... You're probably used to roses for every event, anniversary, and birthday. Well, try red tulips and blue iris because I have no better way to tell you how much I appreciate your rosy cheeks or the blue tint in your eyes, and guess what it came with? A handwritten letter, and you know what else? I gave it to you on a Wednesday for no reason. I mean, I can't spell it out any clearer than this. How can chivalry be dead when the cavalry has arrived behind this mic? Number three. It's hard to find genuine people in this world. Ask a room full of guys what they like about you, and yeah, you'll hear about the curves and the humps, the thin waist, these hollow compliments with shallow intent, with fake passion weaved between every letter, but waiting patiently in the back of the room will be a poet who will say, how about we discuss this over a cup of coffee at Bentley's? By the way, does it piss you off that gender roles are cemented in today's society? Me too. Let me cook you dinner while we're at it. <laughs> We make every moment into an event. A leaf falling from its tree is our Super Bowl of poetic influence. A girl holding her dad's hand is our version of a love story. How can we be bored when we can turn the dripping of water into a symbolic mosaic of anecdotes and lessons? We will help you to enjoy every jam traffic stop, every boiling hot summer day, because there is nothing in this world that can't be enjoyed and have light if you just open your eyes a little bit more. Number five, we know when we're wrong. Stubborn, forgiving, amazing, or mistake-ridden. We can be a little bit of everything and a whole lot of nothing. But morality is tattooed to our frontal lobes and great deep in our bones because no one can feel emotion like the people that, who give it life through words. Apologies won't end with I'm sorry because I'm sorry implies that a few words can wipe a slate clean. Instead, every ounce of you will know that we know and every crumb and bit that exists will know and you will be sure of our regret and drip of it like a sponge and when you break up with a poet. Their tears will be short-lived and they will spread a smile that streams from content because you just wrote their next poem for them. <laughs>